Hey, it's Tash and welcome to my video. It's been a minute. My bad. Uh, life. I got a comment from Zenobia Ray. Thank you. And she asked me to do an in-depth figure skating tutorial. It took me a while to decide how to do this because I tend to like overthink and get really, really overwhelmed with possibilities but i decided to narrow my focus and make a dress that was kind of simple and basic but also like not lame <laughs> you know so this is a version of a dress that i think is pretty simple and straightforward but you wouldn't like know it and it's tash tash version <laughs> for inspiration i was scrolling through pinterest and i found this dress right here. I really liked the way that the dress like flowed and how it came to these like, <laughs> why did I grab my hair? How it came to these points. To me at least, the most important part about making a dress is having those like nice lines and that good flow because, you know, in skating you want to have your nice like extensions and points and I think your dress should reflect that. So I drew my version of the design. It's a bit different, it's just two-toned with two different fabrics and very easy straightforward. What you'll need to make this dress is a skating dress pattern. I use this Jadi 3026 one that I've used for many videos and I really like. You need either pattern paper or regular paper or even you can get away with newspaper to make your pattern. For the dress, you'll need two different spandex or lycra fabrics that are four-way stretch. I chose a black spandex and a black stretch mesh. That's hard to say, but you could do two tones of fabrics or I like, I really like the like mesh and like the, the spandex, it looks cool, but you could do two different lycras, up to you. You need two different types of elastics. One that is three eighths of an inch wide and one that is a quarter inch wide. And the quarter inch wide needs to match the color of your mesh if you're using mesh. So I got a black quarter inch elastic. You'll also need matching thread and any kind of rhinestones that you like. I got these silver ones on Amazon. Last but not least, you'll need a type of stabilizer. I used an iron-on tear-away stabilizer, but you can also use freezer paper. I've used that in like all my videos in the past because you can use freezer paper for multiple different crafts. So if you're just making a dress once in a while, it's kind of better because you can use it for other things. But if you're using iron-on stabilizer for other sewing projects, then definitely get it because it is a lot easier and better but the other one still works. Let's get into creating the dress. I started out by laying out my pattern and I rolled over my patterning paper on top. It's kind of sheer, so with this kind of paper, you can just trace over your pattern. If you want to cut it out, you can cut it out as well. I use these patterns over and over again and I make dresses for different people that are different sizes, so I don't want to cut it out, but you can either cut it out trace it out on patterning paper. If you're using solid paper, it's often easier to put the pattern paper, or no, not the pattern paper. It's often easier to put the pattern on top of your paper and you can even use a pin and stab your way all the way around. That's an option. But what I did is I traced over my pattern on the patterning paper and this pattern actually comes into shapes the same kind of design that I'm doing but it's not the same shapes so what I did is I traced one part of the pattern and then moved it and then finished it so I ended up with two flat blank pattern pieces that I could then draw my pattern on and with this it's better to use very simple designs to start out with because it can get a little bit complicated <laughs> the more you do but try to start off with like a simple design and I mean you could even follow the pattern design but yeah I'm being a little bit a little bit you know you gotta be creative you don't want to just do the same thing all the time you want to do your own thing this is how you do your own thing in drawing my own design I drew it out in pencil first and then I drew it out in marker so you can see it better and then I cut those pieces out 
I also chased and cut out the pattern for the sleeve. The only change that I made is I added a little triangle at the front part because I like the sleeves that come to a point and the loop around your finger because to me they look like elegant and I like the line that it makes. For some reason I'm obsessed with lines. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why. I cut out a skirt pattern but we're going to talk about that one later because skirts. And then the last pattern piece is the collar piece. After that, I used all my patterns to cut them out on the fabric. I used random objects as pattern weights with my rotary cutter that I love so much to cut out the pieces, but you can always just pin them out and cut them out with scissors, no problem. There's also no need to worry about seam allowances because we're working with very stretchy fabric. Once those are all cut out, this is what they look like. All my pieces, we're getting started. <laughs> Let's connect them together. First things first, I'm gonna create my front and back pieces. I ironed my stabilizer to the back of my mesh fabric and then I pinned my spandex fabric on top, making sure that it was all lined up properly. The reason I'm pinning it is because the iron-on stabilizer doesn't go through all the fabrics. Then using a basting stitch, I connected the pieces together. And a basting stitch is a straight stitch with the longest stitch length on your machine. The reason I'm doing this is spandex gets very, very slippery and it helps the pieces not move, especially when you're dealing with pins and stuff. So it's always a good idea to do this first step just to make sure everything is stable. On top of that, you've got the stabilizer. So that is another tool to make things stable and flat and easy <laughs> to sew. After the basting stitch, I used a slight zigzag to connect the pieces right on the edge of the spandex fabric. Once you finish with that zigzag, you can tear off the iron-on stabilizer. Be careful not to pull out your stitches. Do it gently, but that's a really like, fun, satisfying part. <laughs> then to make sure that my seam lies super flat, I ironed it. Be careful <laughs> when ironing spandex fabrics and mesh fabrics. You never know if you'll burn them or melt them. So make sure to test a scrap of fabric before. Next, this might seem a little bit weird. I did this in my Rocket Man video. Um, but I bedazzled the dress, which seems odd because the bedazzling part kind of feels like the cherry on top, like the last thing you do. And often it is. It depends on the project you're doing. If you're making a dress for someone else and you don't know what type of bedazzle they want, then you're obviously going to be doing it at the end. But when you're doing it at the end, you're having to make sure <laughs> that you're not like gluing the two sides together, you might put like a cardboard in between and it's not the worst, but I have found that it is a lot easier to do the bulk of the bedazzling before you even connect it together, which feels wrong, but but it it works. I like I like it. I use E6000 glue to glue my bedazzles on. Be careful with it. Don't poison yourself like I did <laughs> before. Use it in a well-ventilated area with a mask. There's other ways to bedazzle as well. You can get a bedazzler with the iron-on backing of the rhinestones, but personally, I find the E6000 glue is the strongest hold and they like never fall off. <laughs> well, they well not never never, but like they're way less likely to fall off, but use the method that you prefer. Also, a quick tip from Tash, if you're using the E6000 glue and you get these like stringy bits, kind of like when you're using like a hot glue gun and you get those like weird strings, um, use a little piece of tape and you can like stick them off. Stick them off, Un like use the tape to stick to them and peel them off and it makes it a lot easier. It's kind of a little, little tip and dash. Here are my bedazzling designs. I went for a very simple scattering and with bedazzle you kind of either have to go hyper random which is what I did or go super precise and like line edges and do designs but I kind of wanted to just do <laughs> bedazz you know. If you see like Gracie Gold's dress or a lot of these newer dresses 
they're very very simple and basic they just have a whole ton of bedazzles and probably a whole lot of like Swarovski crystals which I don't have a budget for but you know you can really elevate that like simple dress with just like a lot of bedazzles so you can do that do that I mean do that once that was done, I sewed the shoulder, sides, and crotch seam together. For my dress, the front and back kind of connect, so you've got the like top mesh parts and then the bottom spandex parts, and you kind of want those seams on the sides to connect so that your line of your uh, on the side here of your spandex uh, lines up properly. And don't be afraid to do like a little hand basting stitch. To connect it in the right part because often when you start sewing these fabrics they like they really love to do a, a this <laughs> and um, that's really annoying so don't be afraid to do little hand stitches if you feel like things are gonna shift on one of the sides that I did it turned out perfect and then on the other side it was like slightly off and if it was for someone else I probably would have redone it but the way the seam sat on mine you didn't really see it. Also, you can add a little bit of bedazzle to cover it up if you need. By the way, for this dress, I got a serger, which is super exciting for me. This is the first skating dress that I've used it on, so I'm still a little bit figuring it out. You don't need to use a serger for this, though. Your machine can either have a stretch stitch. Ooh, that's hard to say. Stretch stitch. On my regular machine, I usually use a lycra stitch. Or if you have a very, very basic machine, usually a pattern will tell you to do two straight lines of stitching plus a zigzag. But you know, read your pattern. Those are kind of the things that I've used that have worked in the past. For this next part, I made a little bit of a mistake in the order of operations <laughs> that I was doing, but I'll explain it in the proper order. So the closure of this dress that I chose is doing kind of the teardrop loop at the back of the dress with a little snap clip. What you should do to start is apply the elastic to the loop part before the collar. I did it the other way around. Don't do that. <laughs> So start with the elastic. To do this, you pin the elastic at the top. And for this one, it's not so critical that the elastic is pulled a certain amount or not. So you just lightly pull it and you do a zigzag stitch. I like using a three, like three width on this one. And you do a zigzag stitch in the middle of the elastic as you lightly pull it all the way around. And then you fold it over and you do another of the same zigzag on the edge between the elastic and your base fabric all the way around and it does a nice closed elasticated seam or seam what do you call that seam i don't know it's a little, it's a nice elasticated edge after the loop is sewn you can sew on the collar and you should end up with a bit of an excess fabric on each side of the loop which you can attach the clip on now, these are the clips that I wanted to use, and then I forgot that I used the black ones in another project, so I only had the white ones, and I was like, that's going to look like weird. So I used a regular snap clip, and I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't hold properly, but it worked really well. So you could use those too. Maybe add two or three if you're uncomfortable with it, but yeah. These I sewed by hand and you sew them on tightly onto the sleeves. Before I sewed the sleeves together, I serged this point part. I just added a line of serging. In my mind, I was thinking maybe that'll make it easier to fold over and sew, but honestly, it didn't really do that much. So you don't really need to do that or you can do it if you want. Once that point was serged, I sewed down the seam of the arm and then folded the pointed area over and did a slight zigzag all the way around to finish that edge. I also ended up doing this later for some reason but after that you can use the same elastic that you used for the top teardrop loop to make a little finger loop and you just do a little loop and you sew it back and forth and back and forth to make sure that it's on tightly just for that little finger point. This is so cute. I like it. Once that was sewn, I sewed the sleeve to the armholes. To finish off the bodice, we have to sew the leg holes. 
I like to use the thicker elastic around the leg holes and I feel like it doesn't stretch out as much, like overstretch. The thinner elastics tend to overstretch and then lose their shape. So I like the thicker ones to kind of like hold everything in, you know? For the sizing of the elastic, I've kind of gotten a feel of just making a bit of a smaller loop than the leg hole that it is. I know on patterns, it will tell you a length. It's a little bit of a trial and error, so don't be afraid to just try it and then, you know, undo it if you have to. When I was starting out, I think the first dress that I made, I undid the leg holes like three or four times because they were not sitting right. So don't be afraid to like try. I found that if I'm just pulling the elastic around, I tend to get a bit of an uneven stretch. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. An uneven stretch around the leg hole. So to me, it's a much safer way to make the loop first and sew it down and then split the leg hole and the elastic into eighths, pin them all the way around. And then this time was my first time using the serger to serge the leg hole first. But you can do this just with a zigzag. It works exactly the same. You do a zigzag all the way around or serge it like I did. And I'm not really used to doing this with the serger, so it wasn't perfect but it still worked fine. And then you fold it over and again, like that back teardrop loop, you do another zigzag all the way around between the elastic and the base fabric. And I like using that three length, three width zigzag again. There you go, the body is done. Woo, accomplishment. Oh no, now it's time for the skirt. My most dreaded part. So the skirt, I find it hard. So if you find this hard, you're not alone because I've made a bunch of dresses and I still find this part difficult. The way that I like to do it is doing the body separate from the skirt and it's, it's challenging. It's a, it's a time and a half and I'm getting better with practice. Here are my skirt pieces. I'm trying to kind of mess with different skirt patterns. So this is not how they ended up turning out. I made them way too big and stuff. But if you're starting out, really follow your skirt pattern on your dress pattern. It's a lot easier. I started the skirt by serging the front and back pieces together down at the sides. I did adjust these as I went along. And then I tried it on. It's a good idea to try the skirt on and off a lot if you're doing this for yourself. Usually your fitting is fitting the skirt on if you're making it for someone else. This was the first fitting that I did of it and you can see that it's way too long so I definitely cut it. For a spandex skirt like this is, you don't need to hem the bottom of it. Um, honestly, most of the time I wouldn't bother because it looks totally fine and hemming stuff is difficult, so you don't need to. But I got a question from Anna B and she said, how do you go about hemming stretch fabrics, lycras, and knits? I tried using a plain stretch stitch, but even though I try not to pull, I always end up with an unwanted lettuce hem. And um, dude, I feel you. Like, I love a nice lettuce hem, but when it's unwanted, it's one of the most frustrating things in the entire world, let me tell you. So I'm gonna hem the edge of the skirt just because it's a good opportunity to show it. But you don't have to do it. You can do it. You don't have to do it. Up to you. This fabric doesn't fray, so yeah, no. There are many different types of stretchy fabrics, so this might not work for every single one, but this is how I hem skating dress fabrics. The extra challenge in this one that you kind of have to bear in mind is that this skirt is a curved hem and that makes life so much more difficult. <laughs> I mean, even, you know, it, it drives me crazy. Sometimes I go to the store and I buy a dress or I'm trying on a dress or a skirt and they have a curved hem and even their hems are like twisted and bad. So don't feel bad if you're struggling with this because all curved hems are a freaking struggle and a half, okay? So like, don't feel bad. But 
<laughs> yeah. For the skirt, I started off by ironing the hem about, uh, I think I did about a centimeter, centimeter and a half. Using the iron, I kind of ironed sections and then pinned them down. They're not going to be perfect, okay? Don't expect it to be kind of like cotton fabric. It does not fold that easily and I am afraid of going too hot on the heat setting because I don't want it to melt. Just do like the best that you can to kind of pin it all the way around evenly. Then to sew it down, I used a slight zigzag instead of a straight stitch. I find that it's not an area that's under tension, so you don't need it to be a full-on zigzag, but I find that that slight zigzag kind of makes it a little bit easier. Maybe that's just me. Now, if your hem was a straight hem, it wasn't a curved hem, you shouldn't be pulling in your machine at all, right? If you're having to pull, you might be having different issues. First, I would recommend get yourself a walking foot. They're really cheap to get online and they make a world of difference. I like always use the walking foot. I kind of forget that I always have the walking foot on my machine. I don't know why, I just leave it on. <laughs> Either that or if you're having like a lot of trouble, I would even recommend using that iron-on stabilizer again just to keep it flat. I think some people even just use a sheet of paper to kind of keep things flat and moving along. So if your hem is straight, you shouldn't be pulling like at all. That's what's going to give you the lettuce hem, right? It's like that pulling. So try looking for different options that make you avoid that. I hope that helps. <laughs> for the curved hem, it's a little bit unavoidable to get a little bit of pulling and I don't, uh, don't want to call it pulling. I like call it maneuvering it through the machine and slightly, I don't know, I kind of did this kind of motion to kind of maneuver it through. So any amount of kind of bunching that you would get, you're trying to kind of evenly distribute it all the way around as much as you can so that any kind of warping that you get is so evened out that it it doesn't cause like big sections of like stretched stretching or bunching you know it's just the problem that you're gonna get when you're folding a larger circumference onto a smaller one there's always that little bit of excess fabric right that has to go somewhere it doesn't just disappear now my final trick to help get this kind of a hem flat is to then iron it after so you can see how it looked like before when I just sewed it and then this is what it looked like after I ironed it and I think honestly it looked pretty good I was really happy with it last but not least the final part is connecting the skirt to the body this this part is kind of my nemesis <laughs> I hate doing this I uh, it's the worst, but you know what we do? We get her done. <laughs> so you're 100% gonna have a hard time with this. I have a hard time with this all the time. So just get that out of the way and be like, this is gonna be a hard time and we're gonna deal. So what I do with this is I try the skirt back on and I make sure to pin it in the place where it flows off the body as well as possible. So it kind of hits the top of your hip bones here. It a little bit depends on the design of the skirt that you're doing, but I like when it hits the hip bones and then it should hit the front of your stomach, kind of where your it flows off your body and then in the back a little bit lower so that it doesn't bunch up too much on the small of your back. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but it ends up fitting a little bit different on every single person. That's why when you're making a dress for someone else, you're like fitting the skirt on them because people are different, <laughs> you know? Just, yeah, just place it where it feels right. And if it doesn't look right, just take it out and redo it. Once it's pinned at the sides and the front and back, I took it off and I tried to curve it so that it has nice curves from each pin on the side. I also try to match up the pins because sometimes you can like pin them slightly different so I tried to make them the same height from the bottom 
of your bodysuit. And then I try to do, as best as I can, a nice curve. And I pin all the way around. And then again, like before what we did at the beginning, I do a basting stitch all the way around just to help it not move as much as possible. And after that, you hold it and you do a zigzag, just the same as the front, just the same as you would do an applique, you know? And somehow for this dress, I did it first try. I was like, this is progress. <laughs> it's like, finally I'm starting to get this first try because for a long time, it's just doing it and then messing it up and then starting it over. And I've even done like, hand basing stitches on different types of skirts because sometimes they're a little bit trickier than others but you know try your best and you know you you can always just unstitch it and try again i know that sounds easy but it can get frustrating and i'm just here to tell you just keep trying just keep going at it because you can do it if i can do it you can do it one time i even mess up a dress for my friend and she needed it for the next day and I did do a whole new dress in three hours and let me tell you that was a trip <laughs> so keep trying you got this woo go you <laughs> and that's my dress it's been a bit of a trip I hope that that was in depth enough I feel like I could go on for hours and hours and hours but that's the best that I could do for now we'll do more in the future but yeah, I like how this dress turned out. And I know you're probably just saying like, Taj, I wanna see the final results. So you can see here. <laughs> There you go. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, questions, let me know. If I did anything weird, <laughs> let me know. And I hope some of my little tips and tricks helped you on your journey to create your own dress. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you not in six months, maybe sooner than that. Um, whoops. Anywho, um, subscribe. <laughs> Bye.